from SVG Cuts here and I'm super excited about this really cool carnival stuff for summer because when I think of summer I think of really fun carnivals and there's actually one in town right now that we are excited to go to and go right on the ferris wheel and everything so I hope you get to enjoy some summer carnival fun and this stuff definitely gets you in the spirit of summer and everything so you can definitely make it for a birthday party, which would be a really cute theme for a birthday party, or just for fun, because it's fun. So I had a lot of fun picking out my paper to use. I went real colorful, which you can't go wrong if you just go colorful. And the paper that I used this time is by My Mind's Eye, and it's called Indie Chic. And I had to get it as soon as I saw it, because it's just really pretty and textured, has a nice feel to it. So. Loved using that, definitely awesome. I found mine at twopeasinabucket.com, so you can probably still get it there. So obviously the most noteworthy part of this is the Ferris wheel, which is pretty crazy. Um, it just is really impressive. If you make this, people are gonna be like, you seriously made a paper Ferris wheel, oh my God. So really cool and really like fun to embellish and it does spin around and you can't really fill it up with a ton of candy because it just gets too heavy and it starts to bend over. So I wish that you could. I, I really tried to figure out a way to make it that strong, but it is made out of paper, so not that surprising. But if you wanna get some cotton candy and put it in little baggies, you could put that in each little basket. Or I also had some gumdrops that are, they're pretty lightweight, so you could put a couple gumdrops in there. And just to fluff it up, I put some of this paper grass inside here. So that kind of lifts up the candy and makes it like bulks it up a little bit. So you can definitely do that and that's super fun. It takes a little while to glue all the pieces together, but it's not confusing, it's not hard at all. So just set aside some time to get crazy crafty and uh, I'm gonna show you how to put that together here in just a second. So we also have a really cute little tent box and they look so cute together, don't they? I just love it. And you can put anything in here, some kind of little gift or something. And the lid just lifts off and it's finished off real nice on the inside. So that is fun too. I'm gonna to show you how that goes together. Super easy. And then we also have our scrapbook page. So you can add to your ever growing stash of pre-designed scrapbook pages that are so easy to make because you just pick out your paper, load it in your mat, let your machine cut it out, and you have a super cool page. So you can get creative, change it up if you want. You can use obviously different paper and everything. So I think this is really cute how the pictures are shaped like balloons. And I made it real easy to let your machine cut your paper, cut out your photos for you. So you just use this little photo template and I have a separate video on how to cut out photos using the photo template. If you just click over here, you can go straight to that separate video and see step by step how to do that. So when I get my pictures from the one hour photo place, I just upload them online, actually at walgreens.com and they're only 19 cents a piece. So super cheap and just go pick them up. They're usually ready within an hour, like sooner than an hour. So. That is easy and fun, and when you start to add up all your scrapbook pages and you look through them, it's so cool to look through them, so that's really fun. So we also have our really cute um, trifold step card, which I have made to look like a fun house. And the cool thing is that it folds down flat as long as you, you know, lay these little pendants down so they don't get squished. And then it looks super cool when it is opened up. So I have the base of that cut out to show you how it folds up real easy. Your machine does all the scoring and cutting for you so you don't have to measure or anything with a ruler like you would if you did not have a cutting machine. And then finally we have our cute little cupcake wrapper which is, it's festive but it's also versatile because it's kind of just plain so you can give that any spin you want for a different holiday maybe Halloween since it's kind of spiky it kind of could be scary or something with the right paper so super fun projects and I've got all my paper cut out to show you how these things go together so let's get started so first let's take a look at our cute little trifold shutter card and it's already scored and sliced apart here and the only thing you need to do is figure out which way each of these folds goes. So I'm just looking at this card here. If you wanna look at a picture of the card that's in your download to help you, 
you can do that. And just go one at a time until you have everything folded. And then it just closes like this. Yep, like this. And if you fold it the wrong way, you can just fold it the other way. It's not gonna ruin it if you don't fold it the right way the first time. So there we go. And now all you have left to do is just add your little panels of paper and then your embellishments. And then I added these cute little pendants by tying in a double knot on the back side of the card. So it's pretty simple. So next let's move on to our cute little tent box. And first we're gonna put together the bottom. And the bottom is made up of these two big pieces and these two pieces. One of them is a little bit smaller. That's gonna go on the inside at the end to finish it off real nice. And then we've also got these rectangles which are gonna go on at the end too. So first, let's just take some glue and put it on this panel, or this tab I mean, on the end here. And as usual, just do a nice thin even layer of glue. Mine's a little clogged up here. And just put it right on the other identical piece. And just line it up as best you can. Actually, at this point, you could go ahead and put on your panels, which are just these pieces. If you want to run a brown ink pad around the edge first, that's a nice touch. And then just alternate them. Doesn't matter which goes where, as long as they're alternating. So just glue those on now, since it's flat. And then go ahead and do the same thing on this tab with your glue and just glue that into place like this. Okay, now all you're going to do is flip it over and put glue on all of these tabs here. Take your bottom piece, which is the larger of the two shapes, and glue that right in place on the bottom. Then when that's pretty dry, you can go ahead and flip it over and glue this on the inside to finish it off real nice and hide those tabs. Okay, so now for the lid of our box, we've got this large circular shaped piece, two little trim pieces, and a bunch of triangles, two of which have flags on the top. And then finally, we've got this rim piece here. So first, let's glue this guy together by putting some glue on the inside tab here and just glue that shut like this. And then next, once that is pretty dry, we're going to flip it over and we're gonna put glue on all of these tabs and we're gonna put the, the rim on and it's gonna fit just perfectly. And we're just gonna go one at a time and push each little one down into place. So just go ahead and do your best to put a nice thin, even layer of glue all the way out to the little corners so that it gets a nice hold. And I can't wait to see some of these carnival things done up for Halloween. I think that would be so cool because one of my favorite movies to watch when it's fall is called Something Wicked This Way Comes. It's an old Disney movie and it's a story by Ray Bradbury and it's super cool and it's about this like spooky carnival that comes to town in October and it's really festive to watch for fall and for Halloween. So I think like Leo was saying, there's always a dark side to carnivals, so it would be really fun to use Halloween paper and add some cute little like spiders and stuff. So I'm just putting this rim piece in place and I'm just working my way around and making sure the corners line up and I'm squeezing it to help it dry in the right place. And you know, mine's actually not perfect right now, but 
you can take your time a little bit more and be more precise, but you get the idea. So next, we are going to put this trim piece in place. And I've gone ahead and I've creased all these scored areas. And then all I'm going to do is put, I'm just going to put a big fat line of glue on the inside here. Not on the scalloped pieces, just on these, these flat pieces. And then I'm going to just put it in place around the side, around the edge. Just give it a little squeeze while it dries. And then go ahead and do the same thing with your other one. And then when that's done, just go ahead and alternate these triangles around. I'll just put one on here. And the only thing you want to make sure of, as you probably already guessed, is to make sure that the pieces with the flag on top are on opposite sides. So if I put this one here, I want to make sure that I put the opposite one on the opposite side. And then when those are dry on the bottom, I'm just going to put glue. Oops. Definitely want to make sure the flags are going the same way. And then just glue the two flags together up top. So moving on to our spectacular Ferris wheel here. I've got the bottom pieces already put together for half of it. So one side is already put together. This is really thick. It's several layers thick, nice and strong. And then here's the other side. So there's, in total, you're going to have two of these pieces. One of mine is yellow. This one is the same as the yellow one. So it has the largest circle up here. And then you're going to have eight total of these pieces, four on one side, four on the other side. And these are all identical. And then you're going to have two total of these, which are different because of this tab on the bottom. So all we're going to do is glue all four of these together in a stack and then glue them on top of the one with the tab on the bottom and then glue this accent piece on the front. And mine looks boring because it's green, but you can definitely use a cute, fun paper instead. So go ahead and glue all those together. So now I've got my two support sides all put together. And just to go over this again, the top piece is the accent piece. In between, there's pieces sandwiched together that are the same. And then on the bottom, there's the piece with the tab, which folds away from you. So I've got both of mine like that. And now I'm going to take my bottom pieces. And I've got two that are the same exact size, one that's a little bit smaller. And the smaller one will set aside for now. Now all I'm going to do is put a line or two of glue on this tab. And I'm going to take one of my two rectangles. They're both the same, so it doesn't matter which one. And I'm going to go ahead and just glue that right there. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And just glue that in place right there. So next, I'm just going to glue the other rectangle on top of this rectangle. Not the patterned one that's smaller, but the, the identical rectangle to this one. So the one I'm putting on is the exact same size as the one underneath it. Just obviously the more layers thick it is, the stronger it is. So next, let's flip it over. And we've got our two side pieces. This one I've already assembled. And all that's made up, all that it's made up of are this piece and two rectangles. So I'm just going to glue one rectangle on top of the other. And then I'm going to glue them right on top of the other piece right here. So let's just put some glue on this rectangle. You can be a little more precise and careful than me, but I just want you to get the idea here. So just glue that into place there. So now these two are identical. So let's take some glue and put it on this, this tab here. 
and that's just going to go right on the end. And I think I've got it in the right place, but I'm going to flip it over and take a look. Make sure I don't need to adjust it at all, which I do a little bit. So do your best to line it up and then glue the other one the same way on the other side. So go ahead and put it so that the score line here lines up with the edge of this large rectangle here. And flip it over and push it down. Now we can go ahead and glue this liner piece right smack in the middle to cover up all of those tabs that we glued down. Give it a nice finished look. And I just want to be sure that that's in the middle. I can tell where my, my folds are if I just fold this up a little bit. Okay, we're good. So next, these little tiny tabs, we're just going to ignore them. They're going to go on the inside, but we don't need to glue them down. They're just there to just sort of finish it off, but it's not necessary that they're glued because this big piece is going to hold it well enough in place. So what we're going to do is glue it so that it curves around and then this flat side lines up with the flat side of your support piece. And I'm just going to hold that, give it a nice amount of time to dry and take hold. And then I'm just going to do the same exact thing on the other three tabs like this. So again, just make sure these tiny tabs are on the inside and line it up so that they form a nice little curve and then hold it while it dries on this flat side here. So go ahead and do that on the other two. So here is my base all put together. I'm just going to set that aside for now until we're ready for that again. And next, I'm going to put together one of these little baskets. So you're going to have eight of these, and all you're going to do is put a little glue on this tab here and just hold it while it dries. And then just go ahead and do the same thing on the other three tabs. And first, you can add your decorative pieces to the front and the back, or you can add them now, whatever. But mine is just plain, just so that you get the idea. And this also comes with four little donut shaped pieces. I'm sorry, eight actually. So you're going to glue four together and then the other four together. And just set all of that aside until we're ready to put it on the actual Ferris wheel. So next, let's put our actual wheel together. And we've got eight pieces that look like this. And all you're going to do is separate them in half. So you've got four and then four. And you're going to glue four of them together right on top of one another. I've already gone ahead and done that for this. So this is four layers thick. And then I've also glued these little stars on the front. So go ahead and glue them all together. And this is a stack of three, so I'm just going to glue my final fourth piece on. And it just takes a little bit of time to put glue on this whole entire thing. And you also want to do it kind of quickly so that the glue doesn't dry by the time you get to the point where you're putting on the other layer. So just work your way around and it's kind of, it's kind of like therapeutic a little bit. It's kind of fun by the time you do all eight of them. Or maybe I'm just weird, I don't know. That could be possible too. So just do your best to get glue on pretty much every piece. And then just take a look at it from the top while you are putting it in place. And I think it helps to look at these really sharp corners and. You can really tell if it's lined up there. 
And before you smush it down, just make sure that it's lined up as perfectly as possible. Mine's not completely perfect, but you get the idea. Okay. So we've also got a bunch of these little circles that are probably yellow for you too. And all you're gonna do is glue them in groups of two. So I want two of them glued together and just keep doing that until they're all in groups of two. So these are all already like that, so we can set that aside. So now let's take a look at our wooden dowel. So along with your wheel shape, there's also more little donut shapes. And you're gonna have 16 total, so what you're gonna do is just split them in half and glue a stack of eight and a stack of eight. And that is just gonna go on the inside here just to create some space between the wheel and this thing so that nothing gets caught in there. So we'll just set those aside until we're, got, we're gonna put the wheel together. So now for the wooden dowel part. I went to Michael's and I got a quarter inch thick wooden dowel. And I can't remember, but I think it was like 25 or 50 cents. And I'm just gonna cut it into pieces. What we want are eight pieces that are two inches long. And then we want one piece that is four inches long. So I think the best way to do that is to lay your wooden dowel down next to a ruler and take a little, a little pen, I like this little felt tip marker, and I'm just gonna draw a line where the two inch mark is. Then I'm gonna take my handy little craft saw, which they sell at Michael's right next to the wooden dowels, and I'm just gonna saw this. And I'm sawing it on top of this self-healing mat so that I don't damage my table. And you get the idea, you just saw through it. And then once you have a little piece, I like to just take, Take a little sandpaper, sand it off, and then paint it with whatever kind of paint you want from the craft store. I happen to have this real eco-friendly stuff that I got as a free sample, and it works really well. It's by Eco Green Crafts, and it's just like super non-toxic. So I like that, but whatever you got is perfect. So now to start putting our wheel together, I'm going to take my four-inch wooden dowel, and I'm going to put a little dab of hot glue on the end because I'm, I'm not sure that regular glue would have enough of a strong hold. So just glue that right in the middle. Give it a chance to dry. It dries pretty quickly. So now what we're going to do is put this right through the front and then we're going to take one of our pink donuts that's eight layers thick and then our the face of our Ferris wheel then the back of our Ferris wheel, and then our other little donut here. Gotta turn it around and see what's going on. And then feed it through the other side, and get your hot glue going again. Put one little drop on there. Actually, even less than that is good if it's possible for you to not squirt out so much like I just did. And just give it a chance to dry. It's really starting to take shape now and all that is left to do is put our little cars on. So I've only got one here. So you can just follow along and then do the same thing for all eight of the cars. So I put some hot glue on the end of my short dowel you should have eight of those. Give it a few seconds to dry and stick it in from either side and then put your little donut piece on and then your car and then your other donut piece and put it through the hole. So just go ahead and put some hot glue on here and put it on the end You've got one car on, so just go ahead and do the rest of them all the way around. So now all that's left to do is the super fun part of putting all your cute embellishments on. And you can put some fun little bling on each little, little circle here around the edge and maybe a button here. I had some fun putting some cute little, little like strips going through. And I used hot glue to get these, give these a nice hold, these ribbons and sequins. And then you've got your raffle tickets, and I thought this was cute to tie a bow. So you can get more creative, do something different, or kind of do this, whatever strikes your fancy. 
All right, so there you have it. Super fun, super awesome projects. I had a lot of fun making this kit this summer, and I hope you do too if you make any of these. And if you do, we would love to see pictures of your projects on our Facebook wall or in our forum. So definitely share some pictures with us and have fun with your projects. See you next time. Happy crafting. Learn more by visiting www.svgcuts.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and watch all of our crafty videos on YouTube. It's a world of crafty content with you in the middle. SVGcuts.com, inspiring you to live creatively and beautifully.